You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest with us this morning. What it do? From Detroit. What up, Doe? T Grizzly. What's going on? What's, What's up? up, sir? How long you been in New York just now? We got here yesterday morning. Okay, I was just trying to do some timing of things. Yeah. Because I know they just did the Double XL freshman cover, so I was trying to figure out if you're on the freshman cover. Right. I mean, that's that's soon to be revealed. Okay. So maybe. <laughs> now, T. Chrisley got a record out there, First Day Out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, it's a, it's, a, it's a non, it's not your typical song. It's not traditional. It's, it doesn't have a hook. He's just spitting on it, but it seems to be catching a lot of steam mm -hmm. outside, of, not only in Detroit, but outside of Detroit. Yeah. So tell us about this song. You talk about a lot about the, in this song. You give a lot of information about yourself. Mm -hmm. That song, when I first got locked up, right, a lot of people ain't know what I was locked up for. What you get locked up for? I got locked up for a smash and grab in Kentucky. Smash and grab. What's Watch a smash this, and right? grab? A smash and grab is when you run in the jury store with a sledgehammer, smash whatever particular piece of jury that you want. And run out of there. Two years later, you too big to be doing a smash and grab. I know, but it was it was it was hectic for me back then. Mm. Whose idea? That wasn't your idea. It wasn't my idea. Okay. It wasn't my idea, but it you made sense there. at right. the time. <laughs> How many of y'all did it? I really can't. Okay, yeah, okay. No, so I mean, some, I read, people, some people got away. I read about <laughs> the <laughs> I read about the story because it says that um, the owner came out and made you guys. He had a gun. Right. And then he made you guys wait till the cops came. Yeah. And then that's how you guys ended up getting arrested. Why it wasn't even the owner. It was a customer. He, dog, what? That, dude that pulled the gun out didn't even work What a good there. Samaritan. <laughs> right. He ain't even got nothing on the line. He, <laughs> he just said, oh, caught y'all. Yeah. What so, were you thinking when you were on the ground? Like, man. I was sick. Mm -hmm. I was sick. I had called my grandma. She's like, what you doing all the way down there? I'm like, I don't know. They got me. <laughs> so wait a minute. You went from Detroit to go particularly to that store. Yeah, y'all. That was the mission. Like, we planned on... We knew what we was going down there for. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how far is that from, from your hometown? That's like, a, I want to say like a six, seven hour drive. So you figured you go six, seven hours away, you get back home, nobody will ever know who you are because you're so far away, <laughs> even if it's on camera. Even if it's, so You're an identifiable looking person, though, I feel like. I know. We ain't had no hoodies, no masks on or nothing. What? How old were you? I was like 19. Oh, you ain't think this one through. No, <laughs> you didn't think we're just gonna through. walk up in there. No. <laughs> now you were sentenced to 18 months in jail in Kentucky jail. In Kentucky, and how, and how much time did you serve? I served nine months. Then got got paroled, and then they sent me to Michigan because I had a case in Michigan too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the case in Michigan for? I was going to Michigan State, mm -hmm. and I was breaking in dorm, so I got charged on home invasion. At Michigan State. Goodness gracious. Let me put my phones away. Damn it, T. Put your money away, E. Goodness but, gracious. But you are you do know that you're very fortunate that things didn't turn out way. I know worse. it could've it could have got it could have got way crazier. Because Detroit Cause is a cases, crazy place too yeah. to even just grow up in. Yeah, the two cases I was fighting hold hold a lot of time, but mm -hmm. we ain't go as far. Me and my co defendants ain't go far enough for them to cook us. Oh really? Yeah. Now, in that, in that song, you talked about that some of the people that you were charged with told on you. Yeah, a couple, couple of them, y'all. So, so, so how did that, how did that play out? Because I mean, y'all did the crime, right? But, but they just, they just wanted less time, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. they told them y'all could keep going to school. We'll let y'all out right now. And you know, they roll with that. So, Damn. what happens when you see them after that or speak to them? I, I got so much going right now that I don't even pay no attention to it. But if it was different circumstances, you feel me? Only the Lord knows what would happen to him. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because now you do have a lot going on. Now, back then when you were 19, did you have these aspirations of, I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to... I didn't for real. I ain't even had my mindset. Like, I didn't, know, I didn't even know who I was at the time. The stuff I was doing, I was doing just to show people that I would do it. And I was into everything. I ain't had no do's and don'ts, no principles for real. I was really still growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It really took for me to sit down to grow up and figure out what I need to do, how I need to think, and who I need to be. I know from a young age, I read um, your parents were in and out of, of jail when you were growing up. Right. Did they ever try to talk to you about things like that, or was it just kind of a, you were running wild? I mean, I had a lot of older people in my family that was like, don't do this, don't do that, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, all I'm seeing is what they doing, mm -hmm. and they doing what they telling me not to do. So... It, I really don't know what else it is to do if this is all I'm seeing. Right. You, you see how they're getting it, and you're like, well, that's just what life is. Yeah. And then your father's no longer with us, right? Right. He but your, mo your mom is still. Yeah, but she incarcerated. 
Okay. Yeah. You speak to her often? I speak to her often. Video visits, phone, all that type of stuff. Is she getting out anytime soon? Not no time soon. Hopefully, because they pass in different type of laws. But was oh, it for drugs? Yeah, yeah. What does she have to say now about you being more successful? I mean, she happy for me. You know what I'm saying? She's showing everybody in their pictures. Oh, this is my son. A lot of people that she locked up with know about me. Is she locked up in Detroit? In Michigan? No, she in Florida, Tallahassee, Florida. In Florida. You know, the feds send you all across the country. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you get into music then? I always, in Detroit, it's like, it's kind of a, like, flashy, arrogant city, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will rap to show people or to let other people know, like, this is what I got. This is what we be doing. This is how it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I got into it like that. And once I found out that I had some type of talent, I just started taking it serious. When but did I, you realize you had some type of talent? What was it that made you? Was it other people? Was it that? It was other people that, that, that was going crazy off of the stuff I said. Mm -hmm. It was other people around the city. But I used to think that my city was the industry. I really didn't care about the music going outside. You just wanted to be hot in Detroit. Yeah, if you I was, could be I, a nice local er, a celebrity in Detroit too. Yeah, I feel like if I if I was a celebrity in Detroit, then I made it. <laughs> right. So so when so you didn't start writing in jail. You was before you before you got locked up. You was already writing and, and, and playing with raps. Yeah, but I was doing a lot of exaggerating though, mm -hmm. and I was doing a lot of what I thought people wanted to hear. When I got locked up, that's when I realized that if I really put some thought into it, I could tell my story and still make it sound interesting. Mm -hmm. And then you did First Day Out. Yeah. And that record took off. How, how did that record start to take off? Because it's, I mean, you usually don't see artists that aren't signed and a record just popped like the way that it did. Right. How did it take off? I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know. Like, if I had the formula, <laughs> I'd do it every time. Right. right. But sometimes that's the best way. There's no real formula. Yeah. I know. I remember Kevin Lyles sitting right where you were sitting when he was up here and being like, I gotta show you this kid you know, from Detroit that I'm trying to, to sign. I'm going to go out there this weekend. Yeah. And he pulled up your video and he was showing me, you know, all of your stuff. So how did, how did you come to Kevin Lyles? We was talking we was talking to a lot of different labels, but when I finally got to kick it with 300, it just it just felt like the right thing to do mm -hmm. for multiple reasons and multiple that I just felt more comfortable with them. You probably like the other artists that are there also. The Maybe. other artists. It's not a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. The people there just seem genuine. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like they was just for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they wanted me to be a star, and that's what the goal was. Right. Now you're pretty young. Now you, you met Trick Trick for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Right. How was that meeting? <laughs> that was good. He cool. Mm -hmm. Trick Trick don't even be on that until other people jump on some BS. Absolutely. Trick Trick really cool. That's our guy, man, Trick Trick. I was actually in um, St. Thomas over the weekend, and he left a comment telling me to get out of the resort I was at because they had bed bugs there. And him and his <laughs> wife went there, and they actually had to leave and get their money back. Yeah, uh, I rock with Trick. Now, in the song, you said you're on parole in two states. You can't move wrong. Feds trying to build the case. Right? Are they still trying to build the case on you? I mean, that's what the, that's what I keep hearing. Mm -hmm. That's what I keep hearing. I'm on parole in Kentucky and Michigan. And every time I go report, you know, what I'm saying my officers be like, just make sure you're being careful, and you know, because people want to. See you back to where you was at. Can you perform in Kentucky? I can. You can. No problems. You don't. No. You don't need no. I just got a call. I just got a call before I go down there mm -hmm. and let them know that I'm coming. Did you have a really good lawyer? How did you manage to get such a little time for everything? I ain't gonna lie. At first, I had a quarter pointer right, mm -hmm. but one of my co-defendants, all of us had had um, quarter, quarter pointers, mm -hmm. but they have to. I think it's called pro bono or something like that. They have to give you one paid lawyer, and I ended up getting like the best paid lawyer. Down there, like I really like looked up, mm -hmm. and he was black, so oh, okay. you know what I'm saying. He was rocking with me. You still speak to him? No, I know. <laughs> you got off that case. He was like, "I'm out. I'm out of Kentucky." Now, how, uh, you, how, how is your mom and dad being in and out of jail affect the way that you were raised? Because did you look at that and say they're making money? This is what I want to do, or did you look at it and be like I don't want to be nothing like that? I looked at it and saw that that's what I wanted to do because what I was exposed to growing up, I'm seeing people. On drugs, I'm seeing alcoholics, and I'm seeing people being poor, and I'm seeing people into sports, but they still ain't got it. And then I'm seeing the people who selling drugs, and they like they living the best type of life. Right. Like this, all I'm exposed to. Right. So of course I wanted to be like that, you know what I'm saying? But as I got older, I questioned a lot, and I'm real observant. So as I got older and started seeing different stuff, I knew that it was more out there. Do you still right. live in Detroit? I do. 
Because I'm, I'm on parole. I can't live outside. Oh, so you can't. Do you want to leave or do you feel like you want to stay? I can leave, but I would have to switch agents. And I don't think no other parole agent would be as lean as mine is mm -hmm. right now. Like, she let me. Like, she for me. You know right. what I'm saying? They want to see you win. She want to see me win, yo. Now, you nervous with making another single? Because I tell everybody, this single, I, this record was not supposed to be as big as it is. It's It has no hook. Right. It's, 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 I talk about a whole bunch of local stuff. A whole bunch of local stuff. You talk about going to jail, but it works. It, people right. really, really feel it. Right. Now, does that give you pressure to make a, a, a quote unquote single single? No. The reason I ain't nervous, I, I'm never nervous when it comes to music because I feel the same about all my songs. I'm telling my story, I'm putting my all into it. And there's a lot of people that can relate to my story because I'm from where a lot of people, majority of our population, come from. So I ain't never nervous. How, how they treating you in Detroit now? How they treat me there? Yeah, like they love you. They love me in Detroit. They like they really rooting for me in Detroit. You know, in the city when a rapper come out, somebody always beefing with somebody or mm -hmm. somebody always got something on their name with me. It's just like his name good. He ain't beefing with nobody. He reaching back to the city and he 100. And I'm humble every time people run into me. Right. How you with other Detroit artists? Other Detroit artists, me and other, I get along with all the D other Detroit artists. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like is uh, I know as an artist and you're working your music and you have to go to the clubs and everything like that, do you feel like sometimes, okay, I don't want to get into something unnecessary, so I don't want to do all that? Because I know a lot of incidents have happened like in Detroit with artists and stuff like that. Right. I don't feel like I'll be put in that situation because I done seen it so many times. So mm -hmm. when it represents itself, I know when something ain't right. Like yeah. I could kind of feel it and see it. So I really stay away from all of that. Mm -hmm. I got, not only do I got too much to lose, I got a lot of people depending on me. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, if I don't make it, a lot of people ain't gonna make it. Mm. They said that you read a lot when you were in, in jail. Yeah. What, what, what were you reading? I read everything. I read hood novels. I read. <laughs> like love stories? Real estate books. Because all them hood novels is love stories too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I read hood novels. I read real estate. I read <laughs> business books. I read science. I read every type of book because it's like, Sometimes they like close mm -hmm. the yard, close everything. You had to stay in your cell, mm -hmm. and this would be this could go on for months. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't had no TV when I first got locked up, but it was a whole bunch of books around. When I read my first book, I never read a whole book prior to me getting locked up. So when I read my first book, I felt never in school with it. at all. You no, know, I never read a whole book. Before. Wow, like I skimmed through something, mm -hmm. but I never read a whole book. When I read my first whole book, I loved it. So I just. Had people sending me books and was just reading. This has been a great time for Charlemagne to promote his book, like, yeah, Black my Privilege. Book. You gotta read my book. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll, he's we'll, we'll get you on book tour book. right now. Book Black Privilege Opportunity Comes to Those Who Create It in stores now. All the bills available as well. Okay, but I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna check that I heard out. him say it a lot of times, so I can now recite everything that he would say if he was here. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> Now, now, what about album? Are, are you considering an album, or is it just EP, or is it just mixtapes, or just keep putting out singles until you, you feel like you're ready? You gotta put out an album. Definitely got to put out an album. I take mm -hmm. my career serious. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Every artist who plan on locking in a fan base becoming a household name, you need mm -hmm. an album. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're still pretty young. Who did you grow up listening to? Like, man, I love this. this. I, it's always interesting to me to hear. I was raised by my grandma, and, and, and I had a sister, right? Mm -hmm. So I would grow up on, like, a whole bunch of old school R&B. Like, what's old school to you? Like, Aaliyah. Drew Hill. See, I don't look at Aaliyah. Silk. You look at that as old school? And all that. old school. You listen to Silk? Yeah, all that. that. And you're from Motown, so, yeah. you know, I would assume that you, do you know, like, the history and do you pay attention to, like, Motown artists and, like, does it ever impact you? Like, man, this is Detroit. This is where, like. When I was growing up, we weren't really looking for that. Mm -hmm. Like, we were so into the streets and the streets was exciting us. We weren't really like, all right, let's sit down and see what the history is. I mean, I saw the Temptations before. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> Barry Gordy's house is for sale. Like, that's, you know, historical, huge yeah. for the music business. I never had nobody to teach me that. Mm -hmm. Everything that I know about Detroit, I saw on TV or heard it. And that ain't really what too many people be talking about because they trying to get some money or into it with somebody or something like that. Right. Are you, know? you concerned about, like, the young kids now, perhaps, like, not having the the guidance and getting into things like do you feel like you're the type of person because they could look at somebody like you and say he's just like us yeah you know he made the mistakes that he made yeah. you were fortunate enough that you you know had and probably you going to jail and sitting down for that period of time that you did was really beneficial yeah it was to you anyway so do you ever talk to the kids because i'm sure you're somebody that they would really listen to i talk to them and i want to talk to as many as possible because it's like i know what they need to hear 
Mm-hmm. So many people come in and speak, but we don't get nothing from it because at the end of the day, when they leave, we don't have, we still ain't got nothing to look forward to. And they really not qualified to even talk to us because they don't know what we need to hear. Right. I know what they need to hear because I've been in their shoes. You know what I'm saying? That's why I go to them high schools and talk to them and kick it with them. Because after I talk to them, I feel like they had something to look forward to. Like, what do you say to the kids? I tell them, first of all, you got to set some realistic goals. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff that we want to do coming from where we come from, we set goals that ain't realistic. Right. Like how you would exaggerate in your raps and talk about things. Yeah. Right. That yeah. We won't. You're like, I'm not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> We want stuff to be an event instead of a process. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's one thing we got to learn. They got to learn how the world works. They got to know. I'm still surprised you did a smash and grab with no mask on, no nothing, with those dreads and, and how tall you are. Yeah. In Kentucky. I had dreads at the time. Oh. I grew dreads when I was locked up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I ain't want nobody lying to And you like, how tall are you? Huh? How tall are you? Yeah, six three people can't do no smash and grab. Yeah. That's just too much. I was way though. bigger that's than like... Aries. I was like 322. <laughs> And the plan was to run across the... <laughs> you was going to run? <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible plan. Were y'all high Look, when you guys came up with this plan? No. Man, some dudes came up with the plan that ain't even... <laughs> ain't even mentally land like that to come up with no plan like that. And no heist. Just, so you was just rocking with it. Because so once you start going, you can't back so out. If you think about it right now, if me and T Grizzly do a crime, right? Right. And guy comes out, I'm going to keep running. Because I figure they're going to catch T Grizzly. If he was 320 <laughs> at the time, yeah, yeah, they catching he's him. tired. Right. I was out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and and if they did, I got some type of speed though. <laughs> Plus, I would have fought. I would have. I would have got away. And if they did catch Envy, he definitely would have said, "I'll take the deal to go back to school." <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Have. I would not have done on my own. Now, you know, you're you're a lyrical rapper. Right. A lot of the the rap that's coming out now and the new rap is not as lyrical. They call it the mumble rap. What do you think about the whole mumble, quote unquote, mumble rap phase? I mean, it's working for them. So I ain't gonna tell them stop doing what's working for them. Mm-hmm. They feeding their families like that. You feel me? But you were never into that. No, because. I don't know how to do it, for one. And for two, I wouldn't try to do it because they doing it because I feel like if I want to be like everybody else, who's going to want to be like me? Sure. You feel me? So. Are you investing in Detroit? Because everybody always talks about invest in Detroit, invest in Detroit. There's so many things happening there now. Right. I really ain't had time to invest in nothing yet. Because you could buy a house really cheap. Yeah. Besides, besides that watch, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, <laughs> what's something that you bought yourself? What's something that I bought myself? Mm-hmm. Um, how you know he didn't smash and grab that? This might be a silver nerd. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bought this. Um, I can't even think. I don't think I. I don't think I really grabbed nothing yet. Besides the little clothes, jewelry. I don't think I really bought nothing. Nothing crazy like that. Mm-hmm. I got some coming this summer though. You heard D today? Mm-mm. Oh yeah. Okay. That's the song me and Yadi got. Oh, oh yeah, we- yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually did hear that D today. Yeah, yeah. They sent it to me. That's out now. All right. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. T Grizzly. T yeah, You running around with 21 Savage also. And you know, the, the label was was put, well, I, I, I've been hearing First Day Out for a long time because we're, we're on in Detroit and, and uh, our people up there sent it to me. I didn't really get the effect until I was in LA one day, right? Mm-hmm. And they played the record in LA and this was early. This was re- really early. And I was like, nobody gonna know this record. I was like, I, I said, I like the record. I was like, nobody gonna know this record. And when that beat hit and the LA crowd right. went crazy and you know, LA is a mix between bougie and hood. Yeah. So it was like right in the middle. Yeah. And that went crazy. I was like, wow. It's kind of like the Meek Mill. Um, kind of like intro. Mm-hmm. intro. Yeah. LA, rock, LA rock with me heavy. The whole Cali really rock with me heavy. For yeah. Mm-hmm. The first time I heard it, I remember I didn't know who it was. It was on satellite radio because mm-hmm. it came on a long time ago. I think they was playing it for a while on there. Yeah. And I was like, this sound, it sounds different. Yeah. So that's good. Absolutely. Well, there you have it. It's T Grizzly. Yeah. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.